Good morning. Good morning. How you guys doing? God bless you. This is your good friend, brother. Pastor Eric here all the way from Escondido, California. And today I just wanted to share uh, just a quick dream that I had uh, over the weekend. Um, I had went out to Palmdale, Lancaster area to minister. And a few days before I went out, I had a dream. And in the dream, I could hear the voice of the Lord saying, I'm dethroning the camel riders. I'm dethroning the camel riders. Now, you know, that really stuck with me. I wanted to press into the Lord and, and, and ask him, what did he mean by this? Because uh, when I think of camel riders, I think in a biblical sense that camels were represented wealth uh, back in the biblical days and but they also were uh, animals used for trade they were also used a guerrilla type of uh, regime robbers and thieves and so uh, camels could uh, travel long distances uh, without having to stop for water so camels were a very much a commodity in the biblical days um, but when the Lord was saying that he was going to dethrone the camel riders I found this to be very I found this to be very interesting and so during my study time, the Lord led me to Judges 8. And in Judges 8, um, Gideon is pursuing the enemy. And there were two specific kings that he was pursuing that, uh, that the elders of his people wanted to see defeated. Uh, these enemies, once again, were a harassment to the people of Israel. And because at this time the Lord had chosen Gideon uh, to be the judge of Israel's enemies, there is a moment where Gideon is passing through Jordan and his army is exhausted because they've been pursuing the enemy. And so... Uh, he stops in a town and to ask the elders, hey, will you consider feeding um, my army or giving my army some bread because we've been pursuing the enemy for quite some time? And the elders of Sukkot actually disrespect Gideon and his army by denying them bread, by basically saying, listen, you have not captured the enemy yet. And so until you capture the enemy, you know, you don't deserve any spoils or any type of reward. So until you finish your job, basically don't count your chickens before they hatch. <laughs> you know, uh, you, we're not going to give you anything. And Gideon took note of this because he did see it as a disrespect to the fact that at least there was someone who was defending Israel um, on behalf of the people. So same thing, Gideon comes across another group of people comes to find out that they as well were not going to assist Gideon and his army in helping them. So he says, okay, you know what? Um, when I do collect the enemy, I will return and you will pay for how you treated me and uh, my army. That being said, uh, he eventually does capture the enemy and he brings him back to the elders so that they can see, you know, that he had completed the task with the help of the Lord. Now, in doing so, back in biblical days, when you plundered your enemy, you collected the spoils of that enemy. You collected the spoils of the kings. And most of the time, the kings or the councilmen of the kings had very expensive wardrobe, jewelry, gold, silver, jewels these things became now your reward if you defeated your enemy the 
elders of Sukkoth, the people now wanted Gideon to become their king and Gideon refused the offer. And I really saw this as a part of Gideon's character where he actually remained humbled after his victory in a place where most, most of us, most men or ministers of the gospel leaders, when we tend to have a victory in their spirit, um, you know, pride can kick in and we feel like we need to uh, have some type of reward. Uh, but the best place to remain is is, is in a place of humility. I've, I've uh, learned that price of believing because, you know, maybe I went somewhere and we saw uh, the enemy's uh, butt kicked that when I came back, you know, I could kind of lax a little bit, didn't have to pray as much, didn't have to pursue the Lord as much. And, and it was in those times where the enemy cranked up the heat and temptation the most. Did the same thing with David. Um, but what I saw here was that Gideon actually remained in a place of humility and said, listen, no, I will not rule over you. Neither will my son. The Lord shall rule over you. Now, this does speak of some humility from Gideon. Uh, but at the same time, we also see where Gideon re makes a request from the people to receive about a thousand or about 1500 pounds uh, of weight worth of gold to make an ephod. Now the ephod was something that the the Aaronic priests had wore on their chest to represent the 12 tribes of Israel, each stone representing one tribe. And it also represented um, it also represented discernment, being able to discern the will of God concerning the people and concerning his statutes for the people. Now, uh, we know by biblical history that this ephah was not uh, made of any particular type of clothing because he needed gold to make this ephod. So whether this had become an idol or some type of uh, gold figurette for Gideon, we don't get much clarity, but we do know that the ephod was a uh, was a piece that was a part of the Aaronic um, priesthood's garmentry. And instructions were given on how to make that by God. However, this piece and a lot of of, of its material was taken from the camel's necks. The ornaments were taken off of the necks of the camels of the enemy to make this particular ephod. Now it struck me when I read this and I said, oh wait. And they took the ornaments off of the camel's necks and collected along with the gold uh, to make this ephod. And the Bible says that, that this ephod had be, ended up becoming a snare to the people of Israel. And they ended up worshiping the this ephod, this image. And so in my dream, remember, I heard the word of the Lord says, I'm dethroning the camel riders. And as I begin to pray in this even more, um, the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me once again that the Lord was dethroning those who have taken the glory of God, those who have worshipped um, idols, those who have uh, put in place their own idols versus the glory of God. And the Lord is dethroning that because also Gideon comes back when the people denied him help he tore down a tower he tore down a tower from uh where that was in the city or the area of these people he tore it down and so i was like wow god now the prophetic number of eight represents new beginnings the number eight prophetically represents new beginnings and we see this pattern in this cycle in uh in the bible concerning the number eight 
we see a cycle we see something uh um turning over again okay now i find it that i find this interesting once again that the lord said i'm dethroning the camel riders and the camel riders were these were the ones who were enemies of israel his enemies they had he had snatched away and he had taken off the ornaments represented pride and showmanship from the enemy of their wealth but i believe it's i believe that as we come into the hebraic year 5781 the head of the year which is going to be in september 19th through the 21st i believe that we're going to see a dethroning of idols we're going to dis, we're going to see a dethroning and we have seen a dethroning of what has become the idols of america we have seen even pulpits in the church have become idols and all doors have been shut and the bible says that whatever door that the lord opens no man can close and whatever doors that the lord shuts no man can open hmm? we also see that the lord had brought judgment to the sports arena of football of baseball basketball all of these things that have taken um that they have taken residence ahead of honoring god on sundays where on most football games are on sundays and even football stadiums and arenas have been shut down okay and we've seen where the Lord really began to place judgment on what has become man's idols, businesses that we never thought that would go out of mega and major corporations that we thought would never go out of business have shut down indefinitely. God is dethroning the camel riders and God is bringing us into a new phase of what it means to truly worship him and to honor him and to magnify his holy name he is dealing with the the camel riders those who have who have placed ornaments on their idols who have decorated their idols have become proud at the fact that they even have another idol besides god jehovah nisi Jehovah Sitkanu, the great I am, the ancient of days. Amen. The intergalactical judge. He is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And he wished that there be no other gods before him, for he is a jealous God. And so I just wanted to bring this before you on how the Lord is highlighting once again that he will have no other gods before him that whatever your camel may be whatever your idol may be dethrone it throw it away before God gets to it amen we've even heard of suicides we've heard of even suicides in this past year because people have lost everything people just could not take it amen so pray for those lord continuously search our hearts find things within us oh lord where we have put things on reserve where we have placed things before you even the subtle things the lord wants it all beloved he wants everything in us and everything that we have We are his. We are a tithe and an offering unto the Lord. Amen. We're not just giving God 10%. We're giving him it all. We're giving him all, everything that we have. Everything, anything that he requests of us, let it be his. Because without him, we have nothing. Amen. And so in closing of that, even though the Lord is dethroning the camel riders, do not let the idol be your downfall do not let your idols be your snare because as we read and as you take time to read judges 8 i invite you to do so you'll see 
that even though Gideon had humility concerning his victory, there was still something in him that needed to build some type of altar of his success. And this very thing became a snare to the people of Israel. And the people did not honor his house and did not honor what the Lord had did. For the Lord had given them 40 years of rest. And the prophetic number of 40 represents testing. The prophetic number of 40 represents testing. Amen. So, beloved, I love you so much. I pray that this has encouraged you, have brought you some type of revelation as it has me. And so until next time, God bless you and shalom.